So when I heard Daisy Edgar Jones was playing the main character in Where the Crawdads Sing, the film adaptation, I simply had to buy the book and read it because I knew I was going to go to the cinema literally the first day it came out. She's a great actress and um, me and Sped watched her in Normal People. Absolutely loved her. Um, there are spoilers, so just bear that in mind if you haven't seen the film or read the book yet. Just save this to your watch later and um, yeah. That is all. So let's get into it. So the five things I love about Where the Crawdads Sing. Immediately you fall in love with Kia's character. You know, when you first meet her, she's only six years old. And she's just this playful, optimistic, curious little kid. Um, and the one thing that kind of hits hard at the beginning is that everyone in her family leaves her, including her mother, her sisters, her brother, and then her father. So ultimately, you really feel for her. In fact, the only person who actually hangs around is you, the audience. You are there to watch her story unfold. And that creates like a an interesting bond between the main character and the reader in that sense. You admire how this six-year-old, this resilient six-year-old, marvels at nature and how nature becomes her, her teacher and mother. Also to add why you kind of root for her even more um, is because everybody in the town either hates her or fears her um, and, and kind of like with, with no reason, really. Um, she's known as Marsh Trash, so basically because of her socioeconomic status as she was born into poverty. That's one reason. And the other reason is that she's she's othered. She's different, you know. She's living out there in the marsh with an, alone. She must be strange. There's all these assumptions that are made about her character and nobody but Tate actually decides to really get to know her. There's kind of this cool double-edged sword with, with the marsh. Like, on the one hand, uh, her, her affinity with the marsh is seen by the people of Barkley Cove to kind of make her different and... She represents the darker sides of human nature and she must be othered and kept at arm's length because she is born into the marsh and all of those things. But on the other hand, the marsh is her protector, her saviour. Um, and it's woven intricately into her identity. You, cu you couldn't have Kia without the marsh. Again, like, the writer sets you up right from the get-go. The writing is, is beautiful. The expressive, observant nature of this writer is just, you're enchanted, you're captivated. It's like you see the marsh through, through Kia's eyes as soon as you open the first page. You're immediately hooked and immersed into this mysterious marshland. So marsh is not swamp. Marsh is the space of light where grass grows in water and water flows into sky. Slow moving creeks wander, carrying the orb of the sun with them to the sea. And long legged birds lift with unexpected grace, as though not built to fly against the roar of a thousand snow geese. And as I'm reading that, I'm kind of like feeling into it and going, that feels like a metaphor for Kia, you know? She's kind of like, represents infinite potential because she's this little girl who, who isn't educated. Um, she never goes to school, but yet she becomes this prolific writer and expert of the marshland. Um, and here I feel like she is the long leg legged bird who lifts with unexpected grace and even though it seems as though she's not built to fly because of the um, the opportunities that were presented to her early in life didn't seem great, against the roar of a thousand snow geese, she manages to sort of take off and come into her own. I just think that's a really beautiful way to begin the book. So very, very clever writing. Literally three paragraphs into the prologue, we found a man dead at the bottom of a fire tower. Nobody knows whether it's a murder or an accident, but something about the way the writer frames all this gives us a big clue that it's a murder. 
she says, a swamp knows all about death and doesn't necessarily define it as a tragedy. Certainly not a sin. And that's it. And there we are already. We've had two huge themes set up for us in, in literally the first three paragraphs, and that is the power of nature and death. Key's involvement in the murder is subtly and cleverly woven into the text. One thing I didn't realise until on reflection after having read the book was um, there are these very subtly, uh, cleverly placed descriptions about wildlife throughout the book. And I remember when I was when I was reading these parts, I was like, there's got to be a reason why the writer keeps kind of swanning off to talk very much in detail about the death of nature and female male sexual relationships in the natural world. And so I, I kind of went back and reread those parts and I was like, there we go. Those were the murder clues immediately. Placed there before your very eyes. Firstly, there's the injured hen that's killed by its own flock. And the reason for that is because if, if it was um, left to live, it would remain injured and would attract predators and that would put the whole flock at risk. Nature here teaches Kia that actually sometimes what's good for one individual is not good for the whole. Uh, so this is your first clue. Then there's a passage about the fireflies. So um, some fireflies signal, uh, female fireflies signal to males when they're ready to mate, but they change their signal um, sometimes and the male will kind of swan over thinking he's about to get, you know, some action. And uh, she bites his bloody head off, basically. Uh, so <laughs> there's a passage in the book for this. Hang on. So passage reads... Key and you, judgment had no place here. Evil was not in play, just life pulsing on, even at the expense of some of the players. Biology sees right and wrong as the same colour in different light. So there you go, there's your second clue. The, here, nature is teaching Kia that there are lots of grey areas when it comes to life and death. The third passage that indicates Kia's involvement in the murder of Chase Andrews is when she's watching the bullfrogs and she can see how the big alpha male bull, bullfrogs croak this amazing sound which it supposedly reveals that they've got great DNA, it attracts a lot of females to come and mate with them. Some stunted males, not strong, adorned or smart enough to hold good territories, possess a bag of tricks to fool the females. And then she goes on to describe how like the alpha bullfrogs like croak and the weak male bullfrogs kind of like hide in the grass near this this croaking bullfrog because it's like oh all the females are going to be attracted to this alpha male and if I'm near it somehow they might think it's me that's making this beautiful music you know like there's there's a lot of trickery that's involved in in the sort of mating world of animals and it's funny because this is exactly what Chase does to Kia in their first date. He, you know, he makes up this really nice picnic. He thinks about this really thoughtful place to take her on the beach. Uh, and then he tries to have sex with her on day one. And she's like, completely shocked. Um, so it's not looking good for Chase Andrews at this point, is it? No. Remember, Kia spent her entire life growing up in the marsh. The marsh has been her teacher, her parent all those things. So she doesn't see right or wrong the same way that people who've lived in normal society, um, she doesn't see things the same way. She just sees death as just part of life, potentially murder as part of life. Also, Chase did try to rape her. He physically abused her and then he's hunting her down at one point of the book to get revenge. So what was she supposed to do? Report him to the sheriff? the same person who was cut from the same cloth as all the people who thought her to be this strange marsh girl. And of course, when Chase Andrews is this kind of like middle-class uh, golden boy, there's no way they were gonna believe her. Kia simply saw her options and made a decision. She could either have let Chase rape her and be at his mercy for the rest of her life, she could leave the marsh, but let's face it, she's not going to leave the marsh because it's all she's ever known. And she's actually making a living from it. Or she could do something about it. I found the 
murder trial hilarious because I was like, wait, these townspeople are willing to put the death penalty on Kia, a girl who was like, they literally have a thread of evidence against her. Like literally they found threads of her red hat on his jacket, which could have happened at any point in their four years of seeing one another, you know? It just seemed laughable and, and totally unbelievable that she would have murdered him. Here in the trial, we see how much these townspeople loathe her because they're willing to believe this far-fetched story that Chase's lawyer puts together. Even as a reader, you're like, there is no way she, she could have like been in a different town and then halfway through the night, got on a bus disguised as a man and, you know, murdered Chase in that time and then got back to the hotel out of town. Like, it, there's no way she could have done that. But when you read the last few pages of the book and Tate finds her poems, and one of the poems is basically a confession, watching Chase fall down from the tower. That hits you hard. That hits you really freaking hard. So those are my five reasons. Um, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought of the book and the film in the comments below. And I am gonna go and get a cold drink because it's like 30 degrees here and I've got this ring light beaming down on me. It's intense, guys. So uh, I'm gonna get off and I'll see you in the next one.